Uh, greetings. I'm going to demonstrate the SEL dynamotor as a motor and demonstrate principles of voltage versus current. But first, so I can do some closer ups than this, I'm going to take this lens from this jeweler's loop. See the cap unscrews and the lens comes out and put it on front of my Digicam's lens. So let's see what happens. I put some blue tack on the lens barrel and now you see I can focus a lot closer up than I could a moment ago. Okay. Here we go. This is going to be a lot of out of focus stuff because the depth of field is very shallow. This is an adjustable power supply. Give you an overall view. Now that's what my vision is like without glasses. Do you feel sorry for me now? Okay. It's adjustable fine and coarse adjustments of voltage with these knobs. I'll turn it up to about two volts. Okay. That'd be the equivalent of about two flashlight batteries. I haven't got the motor connected at this moment. Voltage is pressure. That's all it is. It doesn't do any work. The work comes from the amperage, which is read by this meter here. Now, connect this. I'm looking through the viewfinder, so I'm still sort of blind. Ah. Now, look at the current that it's drawing. Two amps. Well, that's a stall load current. There's nothing limiting the current except for the resistance of the windings. The current is going through a pair of windings there. And so all that wire, many turns of wire, has a certain DC resistance. And that's what you're uh, seeing on the meter. Watch as I turn it. And there's no connection or little connection. Here, there's a, almost a dead short. Actually, that, that high limit current is happening when the, when the commutator segments are being bridged by the brushes. So, <clears throat> both windings are in parallel at that point. But normally, it's just one winding. There's one winding. It's a half an amp. Okay, let it spin. The Digicam's microphone accentuates the noise. This thing is not that noisy. I hope you can hear my voice over the gen. All right, we're going to now investigate the relationship between current and load and voltage. There's the voltage. It's dropped a bit. Let me bring it up to two again. Now, what limits the motor's speed is its own internal resistance and something called inductance, which is a sort of a ma dynamic magnetic form of resistance. This is the current that it's drawing. Let me see which scale I'm on. I forget which scale. Okay, I'm on the low scale now. <clears throat> That'll enable me to get a clearer reading. So it's using right now a little more than, a little less than two, five, it's about three tenths of an amp of current is flowing through the wires, through the motor, back into the power supply. When I put a load on the motor by doing this, let's see if we can see a difference in the current draw becomes more of a dead short. If we apply a load to any motor, it'll draw more current. And it's drawing a half an amp now. And it completes stall about, about half an amp. Okay, you can run this on a single flashlight battery. For higher power, run it on two flashlight batteries. Two torch batteries, excuse me. Now, to show this, uh, principle of current draw relating to load in a more graphic way, I'll disconnect this yellow lead, focus, and put the light bulb in series. That means all the current, all the electrical power is going to pass through that tiny filament. Just a moment while I make that connection. Okay, that connection is now made. The filament is in series with the yellow wire feeding one half of the circuit. Will the motor run? We've just put resistance into the circuit. The motor is now current limited by the resistance of the filament of this bulb. This is a rated at 2.5 volts, 200 milliamps. The motor wants more current than this bulb will allow to pass. So, actually it might help if I screw in the bulb. Let's see if it'll run now. Pardon me. Ah yes, it will run. But notice it runs slower. One reason for that, remember it was, we had it set for uh, about 4 volts a minute ago. 
the lamp is dropping about 2.5 volts. So that means there's not as much pressure left to push the current through the motor. It's, more, it's like a restriction in a garden hose. If you were running a garden sprinkler and you put a kink in the hose, it's going to cut down the speed of the sprinkler. Now, what happens though when I put a load on the motor? Let's see what happens to the bulb if we can see the brightness it should increase. I'm going to give it more, more juice, more pressure. Let's, let's take it up to 5 volts. I may blow the bulb out this way. Now the motor has plenty of current because the voltage pressure is high enough to overcome the resistance. Okay, the bulb should get even brighter when I load the motor. And indeed it does. Not all that obvious to see. Let's look at the meter. Using 5 volts, it's using a little less, about 200 milliamps. Let me take off my close-up lens. Pardon my fingers. Okay, let's do this again. Maybe you get everything in focus. Current increases with load. In an electrical machine, if this is out of balance, of course, <coughs> it runs out of balance. Power is wasted. The frictional losses of various kinds, loose bearings, but also out of balance of the of the armature. For instance, if I did if I did nothing but but put this thing in perfect balance and remove all friction, it would spin faster for a given voltage input. Well, that's the basic tour of the little uh, SEL in unrestored condition. When I've restored it and, and actually goosed it up a bit, it's going to run better. And of course, if you make it run better as a motor. It'll also work more efficiently as a generator, make more juice at less spin speed. There are other things to discuss, how to recharge the magnet. I can make the magnet even stronger than it is. And also timing of the brushes. The, brush, it, the brushes are adjusted a certain way so that it'll, it'll run properly. Well, they may not be an optimal adjustment. Considering how far out this is from what it could be, I'm sure I can make this thing run better than it does right now. But it's a nice little machine. I hope you enjoyed the tour and I hope I was clear enough. I never am. Goodbye.